Design Bigu has been working with women committee health workers trained and supported by Maya Health in Chandpatna, a town in India 70 km southwest of Bangalore for more than two years now. In 2021, after the deadly second wave of COVID in India, the health workers through their healthcare work on the ground realize a need for locally sourced health knowledge with accessibility across the town. We, the Design Bigu Collective, collaboratively started to build towards this need of community-owned local health knowledge repository, enabled by community wireless network and a feminist server, to put health workers' visions and imagination into material and action. The health worker calls this knowledge infrastructure as Chandapatna Health Library. Chandapatna Health Library is a digital repository of local health experiences and traditional knowledge about well-being practices of community members collected and archived by the health workers. In the video, you can see one of the health workers using an open source tool called Papad for archiving this audio video content. Papad allows the health workers to annotate and tag the data collected. Papad is hosted on a local server deployed in Chanpatna and the content is only accessible on the local network infrastructure. This digital infrastructure is supported by a physical wireless network infrastructure which share resources and open hotspot setups in the communities to access the health repository. It is a site that imagines and builds technology through collaborative and situated care in practice while enabling inclusive ownership and participation by women frontline health workers and their communities. As we work together with the health workers to understand how best they might use the data they have collected, we have been conducting workshops and conversation about responsible data practices in the ecosystem. The data set with health information of community members can cause harms to those who are most vulnerable and marginalized. We are in the process of collectively building protocols and frameworks with health workers to prevent such harms to any data donors. We have successfully developed a basic data collection protocol that centers around consent, privacy, and anonymization of the data sets. The health workers, when deciding what data to collect, consider the minimum amount of data necessary to reach the project goals. They have been consciously identifying sensitive data in the data sets to prevent the unanticipated harms to the data donors. In case of anonymization, the identification of data, Health workers are not recording the names and personal details of the community members that could identify them. While the current protocols surrounding data gathering at CHL are about keeping the data within the community, it does raise questions as to the implications of how this data could be used. One of our important principles of advocacy at Design Beku is to start conversations around how and with whom data should be shared and under what conditions. Current data regimes exerted both by government and corporations operate with the expectation that people should relinquish their data for the purposes of a common public good, while we at Design Beku strongly believe that data can and should be leveraged by citizens for their own use and dictate when and how their data should be shared. A potential advantage of this might also be monetization by communities of their data, which might allow them to benefit financially. However, this does mean that there must be precautions in place to ensure that these data sets do not identify or endanger communities, which we are collectively trying to address in conversation with our colleagues at CHL. So far, what this might mean is ensuring concepts of what data is, how data is used, and the significance of need for privacy is made clear, and to make certain that community members clearly understand the implications of data falling in the hands of unauthorized entities. To create an ecosystem that allows data donors to feel confident and entitled to withdraw consent at any time. Exploring contextual understandings of consensus, different communities might have different protocols with regards to how they reach decisions that represent the community in everyone's interest. Setting out desirable conditions by means of a charter document that addresses potential bias of these data sets and makes them aware of the conditions, conditions under which sale might be granted.
These are by no means an exhaustive list of our considerations. And we are also aware that there are initiatives all over the world that are actively engaging with these questions. We would love to hear from, be in conversation with, and learn from those of you who are also exploring these possibilities to ensure communities can optimize their own data to their best advantage. We would love to hear from you. Do reach out to us at designbeco at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.